Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for tuning in again today. Much appreciated. Thank you very, very much. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe. I appreciate that very, very much as well. And uh, today we have one here from Bright Bart. Sound of Freedom beats Disney's Indiana Jones 5 by millions of dollars on 2,000 fewer screens on July 4th. Disney takes an oof. Disney takes a big oof. Sound of Freedom, the anti-child trafficking drama starring Jim Caviezel, has emerged as the number one grossing movie on July 4th, surpassing Disney's Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dysentery, uh, while playing on far fewer screens. The In the final tally, Sound of Freedom grossed $14.2 million on 20, or uh, sorry, 2,634 screens on its opening day of July the 4th for a strong per screen average of 5,407, according to data from BoxOfficeMojo.com. Indy 5 mustered 11.7 million on 4,600 uh, 4, screens for that day, notching a per screen average of 2,543. The irony is that uh, the Walt Disney Company shelved Sound of Freedom when it acquired 21st Century Fox in 2019. Fox was set to distribute the movie. It's taken producer Eduardo... Um, Eduardo I'm sorry if I uh, butcher this name. Vera Stegui? Nearly three years to disentangle Sound of Freedom from Disney's hands and raise the money to release it through Angel Studios. So Disney tried to kill this film, basically. A film about child trafficking, and Disney tried to kill it. Uh, Sound of Freedom benefited from a strong social media push from conservative influencers, and well, as well as endorsements from Mel Gibson, Gary Sinise, who are not involved in the movie. <coughs> there was also a pay-it-forward effort, which allowed ticket buyers to purchase seats for other people who might not be able to afford it. Uh, based on the life and career, uh, Tim Ballard's Sound of Freedom stars Jim Caviezel as a homeland security agent who quits his job in order to bring child traffickers to justice. Oscar winner Mira Sorvino, who urged her Twitter followers to see the movie, uh, co-stars as his wife, Catherine. Andy Five is shaping up to be the latest box office fiasco for the beleaguered Disney uh, the title fell short of its already deflated uh, five-day projection of $85 million, bringing in just $82 million domestically. Overseas ticket sales are also weak on the back of lackluster reviews and a middling level of fan enthusiasm. enthusiasm. I would say middling is probably an understatement. I've seen videos of and pictures of basically empty theaters showing Indiana Jones. So it's, yeah, it's not doing too good for a fifth film. And uh, that lies squarely on the shoulders of Kathleen Kennedy. <clears throat> and pushing her agenda... You know, having Phoebe Waller-Bridge embarrassing Indiana Jones through the entire movie, basically. <coughs> and uh, that is not something fans of Indiana Jones wanted to see. They did not want to see Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, being belittled and berated, broken down in a movie, especially if probably going to be his last movie, that is not something they wanted to see. They wanted to see a heroic, triumphant Indiana Jones going off into the sunset, which they basically did in the third Indiana Jones movie. The, they literally rode off into the sunset and that would have been a perfect end for the movie, but they brought it. They brought him back in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and 
I personally don't don't think that it was uh, Crystal Skull was that bad of a movie. I know people, a lot of people, don't like it. I didn't think it was that bad. It was bad, but not that bad. This one, though, my goodness gracious. I mean, nobody wanted to see a broken down, sad Indiana Jones like like they like they got. The best thing they could have done. Uh, first and foremost, eject Phoebe Waller Bridge and her character from the movie completely and totally. Got, gotten rid of that character altogether. Um, have Indiana, Indiana, and um, Marion happily married. Indiana Jones on the verge of retirement, a well respected professor. And something happens, and he get draw. He gets drawn into one more adventure, one final adventure. And Marion, knowing Indiana Jones, knows he cannot resist one, one last adventure. So she sends him off with a "Be careful," and or "Come back to me alive," or something like that. But one last adventure, and. Not something involving time travel. That's ridiculous. In an Indiana Jones movie, <coughs> that is ridiculous. Almost as ridiculous as Aliens. What it should have in K in tie in like been in the movie is Atlantis. Somehow that should have been this uh, Indy's last adventure, finding Atlantis. Uh, if if you haven't seen a uh, heel heel versus baby faces uh, video with his idea <coughs> for what the last Indiana Jones should have been, I, I recommend you finding that video. I'll try to put a link for it in uh, the description if I can. But uh, that is the one that is one that I would definitely recommend going and seeing because I think he pretty much described it almost perfectly <clears throat> Indi Indiana has to find should have found Atlantis discovered Atlantis was real it existed something happens during their adventure that sinks it down further into the ocean where it can never be found again or something like that at the very end but Indy knows it's real it's out there and that should have been it. At the end of the movie, Indy returns back to Marion in their in their home, not in a broken down apartment. They should have had a home together. And Indy returns to a happy marriage, happy with Marion. End of the movie. That's what that's the way it should have been. Not sad, broken down. You know, his son is dead. He's on the brink of divorce. He's not respected by his students. He's not respected by the faculty. He's not respected by anybody. <coughs> he's on, you know, he's re you know, retiring and it's over and he's broken down and miserable. That should not have been the last of Indiana Jones. That's not how he should have ended Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones should have been triumphant, happy, happily married to Marion in a home, and after he's done with this final last adventure, he settles down and retires, and he's done. That should have been how they ended this movie. But Kathleen Kennedy had to get her little agenda <coughs> with Phoebe Waller-Bridge and completely ruin the movie. And I know I know she planned on 
Like, if you've seen all these other videos, you know she planned on having Phoebe Waller-Bridge uh, pick up Indy's hat and whip and take over the franchise, and there'd be a series with her in it being Indiana Jones or whatever. You know that was her plan. And it got leaked. I believe it was leaked by Doomcock, another person I really like to listen to. But, uh... That got out, that got leaked, and they had to scramble to change the ending, especially uh, when nobody actually liked the ending they had planned. And no matter how much they deny it, you know they had to do reshoots to try to fix the mess that they made originally. They still didn't fix it good enough, obviously. But, uh, you know, that's... Uh, that's how they ended Indiana Jones. And uh, it's no wonder that it's just, it's flopping straight down in the toilet. Flopping like a dying fish. And that's, you know, that's not the way Indiana Jones should have gone out. In my opinion. But I would like to know your opinion. If anybody out there wants to put their opinions in the... Uh, comments down below very much would be appreciated again please like share comment subscribe I want to thank you anybody that's watched the video this far I want to thank you so very much and have a great day see you on the next one bye for now